Hi guys, awesome that you've tuned in. Today I would like to present you my 300MC Master from Omega. It's a beautiful watch, a great diver, and I would like to make, you know, to let you know about my, well, three years of ownership almost. And this watch went really through a lot. I mean, I've been on train rides, banged around in buses, taxis, flights, all over the world. And what can I say? It held up very good. I mean, you know, buying such a watch, I was always concerned about the really fine edges of the Omega and this beautiful craftsmanship that we really see here. I mean, this is all done by hand, the finishing at the end, and it really still looks very good. Of course, you have here and there maybe a scratch or a ding in the bracelet, but I mean, the case held up incredibly good, and it's still keeping very good time. I mean, I am not and I would like to repeat myself, I am not the guy that is really looking at the plus or minus uh, seconds and amplitude and whatever. Uh, I mean, if it's low, we all know we have to change it, we have to get it into service and things have to be taken care of. But uh, for now, man, I'm super, super happy with my rod, with this watch, with this watch, um, which is my watch. And uh, I love everything. I really love everything that is, um, you, you know, just saying it's not a Rolex, you guys know. I'm, I have, you know, I have a few opportunities here and there to come around such uh, Rolex watches and I love to wear them. And sometimes I, uh, I'm very, very proud of uh, to be a part of the Rolex game. Not always, I have to say that because some clientele, uh, some clients of Rolex are not my, um, you know, my cup of tea. You know, especially um, in, in direction of the rappers, I... I don't like, you know, to have the same watches as some super cool rappers, you know, just, you know, talking about aftermarket uh, diamonds and stuff like that. So I'm totally out of the game in that regard. But uh, however, I am very happy, really, guys, super happy to call this watch my own and just let me get a little bit closer with the camera to the watch. I will try that here, uh, you know, live with you guys. So I'll just scroll down a little bit with a cam and uh, now we have it a little bit closer uh, sure uh, I could also use the zoom but I don't want to use the zoom you know I'm just taking a different angle so you guys are really able you know to see the beauty the real beauty of this absolutely incredible dial guys incredible and why did I choose um, the silver dial over the black one, you would probably ask, you know, for those that are fans of, of, the, of the black dial. Well, um, I owned the black dial prior to that one, and uh, some would say, hey, it did fit your Nissan GTR because my Nissan GTR is also black. And I must admit, yes, yes, absolutely. I have now to correct a little bit again the height of the cam because I'm still not happy. As a perfectionist, there you go. I love it that way. Wait, don't fail me. There you go, and the back. Um, in the yeah, I I have to admit it would fit my Nissan GTR, and it did look good on me. But somehow, you know, I'm I'm a sucker for blue. Okay, number one, I'm a sucker for blue, as you see here, and number two, guys, number two, um, it was too boring. You know, after a while, we have the black watch and. It's not like some of you, you know, some of you probably also bought bought the Omega Seamaster as a sort of, you know, spacer for the real deal, for the Rolex Submariner, right? And uh, I just wanted to let everyone know I'm not the guy for that. You know, if I would like to have a Rolex Submariner, I would focus on the Rolex Submariner. I would not buy an Omega instead, and, you know? And even though you have here a product that is... You know, you cannot compare this watch to Rolex Submariner, all right? It's not possible. But you have a product that is providing a little bit more than uh, your usual... I'm sorry, I have to again adjust the freaking cam. Um, as your uh, usual Rolex Submariner, that is true, but you cannot compare them, you know? If you put this watch side by side next to a Submariner, it, it's, it's not fair, you know? You have here a sea dweller territory and people are comparing that 
to the Rolex Submariner and uh, I am, as I said, you know, I said to myself, I would like to have my Omega Seamaster Professional and I would like to have it in that color variation. I, I'm really celebrating, guys. I'm telling you, for, for me, this is a celebration dial. I'm celebrating the way how everything is playing with the light and playing with uh with with a shadow it's it's incredible and sometimes if if you are lucky enough into the sunlight i'm not able to show you that right now because the weather is not really perfect right now um it does have a sort of a mother of pearl appearance to it you know you have a silver dial but then it goes into i don't know rainbowish coloring with a white background and it really appears to have uh what can i say a sort of mother of pearl dial some uh things i would like to point out with this watch um not because it's my watch you know guys but trust me this watch that you see here this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and why is that well we have here wait i will try to get the camera back into focus come on bro what is up come on here's the watch exactly thank you um you have here a one of a lifetime opportunity to look at the watch with a factory defects. Yes, this watch is one of the early ones and I'm one of the lucky guys. I'm telling you, I am not the guy who is complaining about factory defects. No, I'm, I'm super proud of. Look at the Omega symbol here. It's too far to the right. If, let me just zoom a little bit more in and uh, try to get the focus correct. Wait, boop, 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 boop. there you go. It's too far to the right. Look at the A from Omega, for example. It's too fat. The Seamaster is too thin printed and the Professional is losing its um, paint after the um, S. You know, it's Profess, almost good, and I-O-N-A-L is, uh, well, how can I tell you that? It's much, much thinner. And, uh, Guys, if you are able to come around such a factory defect Omega, don't make the mistake and go to Omega and try to freaking um, swap it. It would be the biggest mistake that you could do. Number one, never forget that the watch is always um, finding you and you not the watch. So it has its purpose, no coincidences in life. And the second thing, these babies here will one day cost a ton of money because you have a one-on-one -on -one. and it's so cool to look over that for example i hope i can get it the um 11 o'clock hour marker it's dented to the inside look at that look at that my hour marker of 11 o'clock is dented into the inside well now when you compare with a one o'clock hour marker it's spheric rounded but my 11 o'clock hour marker is dented so um, guys, I'm so super proud of that watch. I mean, I'm the dude, I'm the dude having the only watch having such a super factory defect in them. Incredibly proud. And if you guys would say, you know what, this guy is talking about stuff uh, in, and at the very end, it's just a fake watch. No, 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 no. It's, it's not a fake watch, guys. No, you can see that, um, if you look at the, at the bridge here and you see Behind the bridge, there is nothing. There is no second arm, you know, regulator arm or anything like that. No, 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 no. This is an absolute um, legit watch coming out of the production line from Omega. And I am the one having a defect. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I'm celebrating it. But as I said, okay, this is here my roundup, my review. I love the watch so far. Been through hell and back with me. Um, still keeping time like crazy, love to have it in my rotation. And uh, basically what I have right now is uh, playing around with the Pepsi and, you know, going to the bank, getting the Pepsi and, uh, you know, uh, wearing it a little bit and then bringing it back to the bank and still have my daily baby here with me. And uh, it's it's really incredible when you, when you have a lot of watches and then uh, you just decide, you know, to wear all the time just two of them. It's easy for the bank. I mean, they got everything in the vault. But for you, it's a little bit strange because, you know, you shelled out so much money and at the very end, it just boils down, uh, boils down to two watches, which is okay, I would say. Now, let me get a little away with the zoom um, and show you how this watch held up during the years. And look at that. Every scratch, guys, every scratch, 
wear it with proud, the watch bring with you through a lot, and loved to be with you through a lot. You took it everywhere. It has its marks. Marks. Uh, so do you when you were small and playing and have here a scar and there, maybe a rash. Um, it's the way it's how it's supposed to be. Um, I was thinking about maybe to put it in a different strap. You know, after so many years of wearing it on rubber and uh, on this bracelet, and I decided really to buy myself an original to this watch matching um, NATO strap. Uh, and, uh, you know, I will probably put it on NATO strap and uh, see how it goes from there. Yeah, guys, that's it for my review. I hope you like what you see. Enjoy with me my small journey through my beautiful and uh, very, very special Omega Seamaster Diver 300, SMP 300. And uh, I would like to know your thoughts about it. How do you like this color combination um, in particular? And uh, yeah, if you like that video, guys, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And as always, we're going to see you in the next video. Love you guys. Bye-bye.